So for this year, I'm less I'm less certain. I prefer a two-year view on Bitcoin. So I think that Bitcoin's likely going to do well over the next, call it two years. Um, it, get, it can get through periods where it's overbought, right? Where where you could, you could have a pretty poor three-month period with Bitcoin and it could underperform almost everything. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In today's video, Lynn Alden discusses dives into the importance of crypto adoption, her outlook for Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF, and why she is super bullish on Bitcoin. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the video. I generally think so. I think we've generally seen improving liquidity. A lot of it's fiscal driven. Um, and, and so I do think that they've, you know, they've resisted the fact that yields are higher, right? So normally when you see yields and especially real yields this high, you should see gold a lot lower than it is. Um, and so I think that gold investors have been sniffing out some of those fiscal problems that I've been talking about. Uh, and in addition, because of, you know, kind of uh, decisions by central banks to diversify their reserve holdings and have more gold in their portfolios, that's been another huge factor as well. So especially from that foreign component, um, there's been a lot of demand. And so, you know, Bitcoin's obviously had, had somewhat similar catalysts. It, it's heavily tied to liquidity. It's, it's had catalysts from the ETFs and things like that as well. So the two re the reasons that both of them are rising, I don't think are perfectly um, overlapping. But I do think that they are following liquidity and which is largely a fiscal driven phenomenon. So I think the ETF unlocks, there's, there's pools of capital that are very big that have not been able to access Bitcoin. Um, and, and so those pools of capital can increasingly access Bitcoin. And so that's kind of pent up demand for exposure to the network uh, that they now have exposure to, or at least, and they don't even all have it yet. Sometimes it takes months for those things to still get approval to start moving in and start to become normalized in those environments. So I think I think that is a a, a contributor to price. Um, the having, uh, certainly in a sentiment sense, can raise expectations. Um, I think that overall liquidity is a much bigger impact on Bitcoin price during bull markets than the having itself. Um, because, you know, if you, if you do the math for how much supply the having takes off the market per day, it's relatively small compared to what you can get from ETF inflows or relatively small compared to what you can get in one way kind of net exchange volume in a given day. Um, and so the overall changes in external demand for Bitcoin play a bigger role than just the halvings during bull markets. I think where the halvings really matter the most is during bear markets. They play a pivotal role in why each cycle gets higher highs and higher lows than the one before it. But in terms of the timing of bull market specifically, I generally point more toward liquidity and less so toward the having, even though the having is a very relevant kind of longer term factor. The bullish momentum that propelled Bitcoin to an all time high of $73,835 on March 14 is waning in Bitcoin price is down 10% from the all time high on April 2. The contraction in Bitcoin price has led to over a 7% plunge to start the month of April. Some analysts believe that Bitcoin is at the beginning of the pre-halving phase that historically follows a certain pattern. Similar to previous halvings, BTC's price appears to be following the five phases of the Bitcoin halving. The timing of the pre-halving drawdown comes 18 days before the expected Bitcoin halving date on April 20. An ex-social network post from crypto trader and independent analyst Rec Capital suggested that the ongoing price action is part of a pre-halving retrace which has seen BTC dip by 38% and 20% during the 2016 and 2020 halving cycles. A sharp movement in the Bitcoin futures market can be noted by looking at liquidations. The timing of the long liquidations coincided with elevated volatility. In a 24-hour period on April 2, over $115 million of long positions were liquidated. Bitcoin long liquidations spiked within four hours to over $21 million on the same day. When BTC longs are liquidated without buying pressure from traders, Bitcoin price is negatively affected. Bitcoin trading volumes dropped over $30 billion from the March 5 year-to-date peak of $45 billion in daily activity. The drop in exchange trading volume comes as spot selling continues to pressure Bitcoin price. 
In addition to trading volume, decreasing more than half from year-to-date highs, long-term holders are de-risking and profit-taking. The most recent buyers of Bitcoin seem to be short-term holders. Short-term holders, as a cohort, have the highest BTC supply since July 26, 2021, which may lead to the continued fall of Bitcoin prices. To date, Bitcoin's price continues to be directly impacted by macroeconomic events, and it is also likely that further regulatory actions, the BTC halving and the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, will continue to have some effect on the price of BTC. In the long term, market participants still expect the Bitcoin price to recover, especially as more financial institutions are embracing BTC. So for this year, I'm less I'm less certain. I prefer a two-year view on Bitcoin. So I think that Bitcoin's likely going to do well over the next, call it two years. Um, it, get, it can get through periods where it's overbought, right? Where where you could, you could have a pretty poor three-month period with Bitcoin and it could underperform almost everything. Um, and then it could have another three to six months of just of spectacular gains. Um, and so um, my view is generally looking back from late 2025, I'd be surprised if Bitcoin was not higher than it is now, notably, uh, and, and that probably outperformed other kind of large, large cap things you can own. Um, but you have to account for the volatility and you have to kind of be prepared for that really uneven path to get there. So I, I think that because we're now in this kind of fiscal dominance regime, higher interest rates fuel the deficit even more, um, which, which which potentially fuels gold. Um, I think, you know, you could get liquidity, like temporary liquidity shocks if, for example, um, you run these big deficits, the Fed tries not to monetize them, uh, and you get kind of um, like a, a temporary liquidity problem in treasure markets. That could certainly contribute to a gold sell-off uh, temporarily. Um, but I do think that the, the breakout has legs to it. Um, I think that the breakout is is real. I think that it's it's based on fundamentals. I think that there's a, a good reason that a lot of foreign investors want to own gold more so than treasuries um, and that they want to basically have a better ratio of gold to treasuries. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's probably going to be a longer term story. Uh, and I have no view on what gold does in say a three month period. Um, but I do think it, it's it's... Now that it's broken out, I think that's a very strong sign that I think it's probably headed higher in the next few years. An upcoming crisis to sweep the United States and the world, popular investor and author of the best-selling personal finance book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki has highlighted that the everything crash was coming, including that of Bitcoin. According to Kiyosaki, debt also predicts Bitcoin will drop back to $200 a coin, in which case the Rich Dad Poor Dad author vowed to buy as many coins as I can referring to the flagship decentralized finance DeFi asset as the people's money. At the same time, he reiterated Dent's opinion that the baby boom generation will be the biggest losers, as their homes crash in value, and that the S&P 500 will drop by 80%, arguing that in this scenario, he would simply buy more real estate, gold and silver. Those who are prepared will soon be multimillionaires and possibly a few new billionaires, and even if they are not, those who are holding gold, silver, and Bitcoin will be richer. However, several renowned crypto trading experts are optimistic about its future, having placed the BTC price prediction between $100,000 this year and a whopping $1 million in 2025, based on multiple observed indicators. That said, doing one's own research is critical before investing. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.